All right, guess what time it is? Gear video time. I normally don't do the big gear video thing, but I'm going to right now. I am currently on Bell Mountain in Bell Mountain Wilderness in Missouri on a shakedown hike for the PCT. And it is 4.10 p.m., a couple hours before dark, and I got nothing else to do other than cook dinner. So let's make a gear video. All right, so I'm gonna first start with clothing. And this, I'm not gonna do the, the typical pulling stuff out of a pack because I've already got a yard sale here in my tent. So I clothing wise, I have darn tough um, medium cushion or whatever the heaviest cushion I think is medium hiking socks. I wear one pair and I take two extra pair. One I reserve for sleeping and the other two are rotating uh, between hiking. So I have three pair of darn tough socks. I have um, shoes. I wear the Hoka Challengers. These are the sevens. So I did the whole AT and up until this pair right here, I've been using the sixes. So those are no longer available. Um, the Hoka Challenger is a little bit wider than the Speed Goat. The tread is not as aggressive. I'd rather have a Speed Goat tread, uh, but I need the width. These also come in a wide size. So these are, these are 14 wides and I don't need that length, but I need that width um, for my insoles and for my foot issues. So these Hoka Challengers are, have been wonderful so far on all my hikes. Um, I also wear, for camp shoes or water crossing shoes, I use cracks on the AT. So this is a new thing that I picked up right before the Bartram Trail. I have Teva sandals. And I actually really like them on the Bartram Trail. They, they have more support, a little bit cushier than the, the crack. And you can actually do a little more hiking in them. The one thing I really like about the Tevas over like Chacos, at least the pair of Chacos that I tried, the Tevas, every, all three straps can be adjusted individually. So it really has a good, good fit for your foot. Um, I also have gaiters. I have Dirty Girl gaiters, some kind of crazy colors. All right, moving on up for clothing. I do have a clothing bag here. Um, when it comes to underwear, I do not wear like ex officios or any of the kind of um, real common popular shorts. I wear these things I found a few years ago on Amazon. They are like cheap Chinese made, but they are so comfortable. They I have no chafing issues. They dry fast. They're thinner. Um, they have a really comfortable, I don't know if you can see, they have a really comfortable waistband on them. And they're, they're cut really well. They, they fit good. Um, the only downside to these things, they all come in like crazy colors. So I have a bunch of assorted colors in these. And actually, probably for the last four years, I've worn no underwear other than these kind all the time. I don't remember what the, the brand or anything is. Um, I've reordered them a few times just by going into my Amazon cart. If anybody's really interested, I can try to find out what those are. Okay, uh, as far as shorts, I had a last last minute change of clothing a little bit for the PCT. I'm wearing, you probably can't see them here, there's some neon yellow uh, Janji, I think is how you pronounce it, J-A-N-J-I. Uh, they're super lightweight. I do not wear them with the... Um, the liners that come with them. I cut the liners out, but they're very fast drying, very lightweight and comfortable. Then I have for my upper, I have a um, REI, I think it's called a Sierra Shade Sun Hoodie, and it has the hoodie on it. It has a, a drawstring here somewhere, so you can tighten tighten the fit to keep your, your face all protected um, from sun. Okay, going on. I don't have the mid-layer with me that I'm going to be taking on the PCT because I don't have it yet. I have ordered Ascenshi Designs mid-layer. Uh, those things weigh like um, 2.5 or 2.7 ounces, super lightweight. So I'm hoping I really like that and that's what I hope to take on the PCT. Um, as far as my Puffy, it is the exact same Enlightened Equipment um, Torrid Apex, I believe, that I used on the AT. Still in great shape. I love it. It's synthetic, so it's a little bit heavier, 
but I really like that um, I do have a synthetic layer just in case, you know, the down sleeping bag got wet or something like that. Um, I love this. It's I'm definitely going to keep keep using that as long as it lasts. Uh, let's see, clothing wise, I have an outdoor research like sun hat. It's really light, dries fast. Um, it, this one has snaps on it and the material that came with it like will cover everything including your neck um, and it snaps here and then it just fits around uh, there's a velcro piece on the back of, of the hat as well i don't think i'm going to take that because with this hat and then the sun hoodie over it i think should be sufficient um, rain gear uh, i'm not going to dig it out here but i do have the mont bell Versa light, I think it's called. I have the rain pants and the rain jacket. Um, I may have more clothes than I need, but I I grew up on the AT, as they say, and I feel like I need to have a dry, warm layer just in case everything gets wet. Um, I know the PCT is a drier trail, but it's just what I'm comfortable with, so I'm going to take probably a little more clothes than some people may. I have pared it down a little bit. If you've watched my ET videos, you've seen this before. It's the exact same shirt. It's a Smart Rule 150 um, long sleeve that I will pretty much reserve this as long as I can. Like the goal will be to reserve this for just dry, my dry sleeping layer. And also having one clean layer that you're just wearing at night kind of helps to keep your sleeping bag or your, your quilt clean because I do not use a, um, a liner. And then for sleeping pants, I have some 32 Heat. These are just cheap Costco type. Um, the men's weigh a little bit less than the women's because they have a shorter waist on them. It's like a half of an ounce difference. Um, but I have the men's large for sleeping. And I'm clarifying men's for a reason. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second. So that is my sleep clothes. It doesn't take up much room. It's very small. You can see that like it fits pants and top fit in my hands pretty easily. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll get rid of it at some point, but for now I'm definitely gonna start the, the PCT with it. Um, for cooler mornings or in snow, I have a pair of 32 heat women's leggings and I initially got the women's because they did not have any men's when I was trying to buy them. And they were on sale at Costco a couple years ago. I think I got like two pair for $7. And I got a, I may have said this wrong. I, these are men's large or men's medium. And then I have a pair of women's large. The thing that I really do like about the women's is the, the waistband is like, is much more comfortable than the thicker elastic waistband on the men's. The other thing, the women's are designed with a higher waist. And for some reason, the way my pack fit on the AT, and probably it's going to be the same with this pack, um, the higher waist goes up under the, uh, the hip belt. And it tends to stay in place and was way more comfortable than when I tried hiking with the men's. It seemed like the lower waist on them, the pack strap kept pushing uh the the waist down so i used these i had two pair i don't know if these are the exact same pair or not but i think these are the exact same pair that i wore on the at super cheap super light i think they weigh right at is it 5.7 ounces or something it's not much so thinking for full layering systems like if you are when it's really cold even in the smokies when it was in the teens or the day we had early on with the blizzard the pair of thin leggings with rain pants was all I needed. Um, and I, I was always comfortable. So that's what I'll intend to do the same here. Uh, the only other things I don't think I covered, I will have a, uh, just a, it's the exact same one I had on the AT. It's just an REI, REI brand synthetic. I like this one because it will fit down over my hat as well. And then it comes all the way down and will cover my ears. Um, I may not ever need to hike with this, but I definitely need it for sleeping because as you can see, my head gets cold at night. I also have somewhere, I must have moved them out of here. Or I put them in another... I've been playing around with where, where to hold, carry different gear. 
And, well, oh, I moved them aside and forgot where I put them. I do have a pair of uh, smart wool thin liner gloves. And then I do have REI rain mitts that will go over these, like if it's wet and cold. And that's what I did on the AT as well. I had a thin pair of, it was, these are new ones actually, but I had a thin pair of liner gloves with the rain mitts over them when I needed that. And it was plenty to keep me warm. So I think that is all the clothing, at least that I could think of. I have um, one thing I am going to try different than I've ever done before. I do have a small uh, Gossamer Gear Bumpster hip, um, what are these called, fanny pack. I'm not exactly sure. I really want it for town. When I'm in town, because these Janji shorts have no pockets on them, um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this. I had played with the idea of just keeping my snacks in here, because normally I kept a day of food in one of my hip belt pockets. Um, but I really kind of like the idea of keeping my phone in here and my wallet and all the stuff that will always be on me. The only thing is I'm real, I have a, a Dyneema uh, chest pocket on my backpack strap that I'm really used to using for quick access in and out with the phone. So I don't know. I got to play with that a little more. That's kind of what I've been, one of the reasons I'm here today. Um, let's see. What else do I have in here? I have a Nightcore NU25 headlamp. Um, on the AT, it's the same lamp on the AT, but I had some really thin shot cord that I made my own ultralight band, and it just kind of got annoying. I know that the band that it comes with doubles the weight, but it's so much more comfortable using it this way, and I did it this bit way on the Bartram Trail, and I just liked it more. Um, I also carry some earbuds, and I carry the old school ones that plug in because I don't want to use um, anything else that has to charge. Let's see. I have an inhaler because, you know, I have asthma. What else is in here? I have some chapstick. And one thing I, I switched up what I was using at, well, on the AT, I carried a um, Swiss Army knife, mini knife with uh, like nail clippers and some other things. I got rid of that because I didn't really use it that much. This is a super ultra light Gerber knife. It, um, it's like almost a plastic or carbon um, handle. It weighs less than an ounce. And it's just got a better, a bigger, better blade that's a little more useful, I think. So I, I switched out my, my tools a little bit, and I'll show you that shortly. As far as the wallet, I just have a Z-Pax. This is the exact same Z-Pax Dyneema wallet I used on the AT. Still in great shape. Continue using that. Let's see. Let's talk big three for a minute. So I will insert an outside picture of this tent. This is a Z-Pax duplex tent. It is the original one. It does not have the zippers and the vents on the top or any of that. And I guess this could be a whole nother video, but I think when this has to be replaced, I will get another original. I don't really want, I don't see a need for the zippers and any of that. I never really had issues with, with any of that on the AT. Um, this is the exact same tent that I used on the entire Appalachian Trail through hike and I have a total of, I don't know, at least 2,500 miles on it because I've also used it on the Foothills Trail, the Bartram Trail, the Art Loeb Trail, and I think and tonight, a couple other little overnights. So I don't know if it'll last a whole another through hike, but we are going to try. It's still in pretty good shape, so there's I'm not going to retire until I have to. Um, my sleeping pad, I have the very standard um, Thermarest Neo Air X Light. I think it weighs 12 ounces. I started the AT with a regular, excuse me, with a wide, um, and I went to a regular, and I think the, the regular is fine. It's 20 inches wide, where the wide is 25, 24 or 25, I think, um, but it's a whole four ounces lighter. I also have a Gossamer Gear 1 8 foam pad to put under it. I have a um, Sea to Summit Eros Ultralight pillow. I'm a side sleeper. Not only do I use the pillow, I also use my mid layer and puffy and kind of ball it up to uh, help with some loft. My quilt, I use the Enlightened Equipment Enigma 10 degree, and it is the um, 950 fill down. 
It's the same one I used. I started and finished the AT with it, but in the middle, I used a, um, a summer quilt for a while. But I've had this for a while, still in great shape, plan to continue using that. One big change, and one of the big things I was trying out today, I have a new pack. So those of you that have followed me know that I did the whole AT with a Gossamer Gear Mariposa. The pack worked out wonderfully for me, but I was just wanting to try something different. I had bought a ULA circuit, and I was torn between a Hyperlite and the ULA when I got the ULA. I used the ULA on the Art Lobe and the Bartram. It works fine, it's comfortable, I like it, but I really wanted a Dyneema pack. Um, I had just recently purchased the Hyperlite Mountain Gear um, Southwest. The Southwest Junction and Wind Rider, I think the only difference in the packs are the material of the, the side pouches. Um, the Wind Rider, I think, is all both side pouches and the back is mesh. The junction, I think the side pouches are this, I don't know if it's Robic or Dyneema, and then it's probably Robic. And then the back was mesh, and then the Southwest, which I have, all three is a, a solid um, pouch. So that's that. Um, I used this pack on just an eight mile day hike, just to try it out, and it seemed fine. I was playing with a few different ways of adjusting it and how to wear it. First two miles or so, it was kind of hurting my shoulders when I was playing around with it, but then I moved it and it, it was fine the last four or five. It was perfectly comfortable, actually. So I, I'm hoping this is a win. I fully plan to use it. Um, and then I one of the big things I wanted, because on the ULA, it, it was not a waterproof pack. So I used a pack liner and then my down quilt, I also felt the need to put into a ultralight uh, sil nylon dry stack because you know the quilt is so important to keep dry. I wanted two, two ways to keep it dry. Um, the quilts just fit so much better where you can stuff them in the bottom. So with a Dyneema pack and then a trash compactor bag lining the pack, I feel much better about just stuffing the quilt in, in the pack. So that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Um, let's see what else. I as far as the buff, I went to just I think I'm just going to use this. Um, and it's probably polyester. It's an outdoor 76 that they give to hikers on the AT. I think I'm going to use this on the PCT. And I don't use a buff a whole lot anyway. But one thing that is different, I did get a Garmin inReach. I felt like it was necessary for the PCT. I did not use one on the AT. I have a pair of Tifosi sunglasses. Um, I've had these for a while. I love them. They're, um, oh, what do you call it? Polarized glass lenses. And the lenses are a little dirty and maybe scratched. I may have to replace these before the PCT. Um, I have a phone, Dyneema phone case. And this is actually a ULA case that I had on my other pack that I just switched over to this one. The only other things in here, I have hand sanitizer. I have some... Um, gold bond friction defense and and then in the front pocket I have toilet paper one thing I did switch up from the AT instead of using a deuce of spades for my trowel I started using a, a snow stake um, I saw this on somebody else's video and I've been using it a little bit it digs so much better so much easier on the hands and on the PCT, if necessary, it is a snow stake, so it can I can use it for a tent stake. So to get double duty there. Although, hopefully, you don't need to use it for double duty while it's you holding your tent up. All right, water carrying. So here's my plan. I need to have six liters of carrying capacity is my plan for the PCT. I have two smart water bottles, actually one smart water and one life water bottle right now. I have a two liter platypus bag that I just got. This is the first time I've used it. And I think my plan is to keep this clean water as well. So I have four, four liters of clean water. And then I have a CNOC bag. This is a two liter CNOC with my Sawyer. I have a three liter CNOC, but I just don't like them because they're so long and they're kind of hard to work with. Um, I have a bug net, same one I carried on the AT. I hardly ever used it. I probably, I'll still carry it. Apparently, we need them. My massage ball. This cork ball, I bought at Outdoor 76 a couple years ago. 
I used it a lot early on on the AT and I think it saved me. It was great. Um, here's my, my rain gear that I already mentioned. And then I just have a light load towel to wipe things down with. Okay, the only things left here, I have a small first aid kit. I do carry a, an extra bottle cap for smart water, extra um, O-rings for a Sawyer filter. I have a couple Dyneema patches for my tent. I have a needle and needle and thread. Um, and I have a couple tenacious tape packs. Very small first aid kit for me. Just some band-aids and um, like anti-diarrheal, a couple Benadryl, and I think the Benadryl are expired. I probably should replace those. Um, I've got a couple alcohol pads in here. I also carry real twiz tweezers, uh, small nail clippers, and nail scissors because I tend to get, I used to tend to get um, ingrown toenails at times, but I, I know how to cut them now with those scissors and I don't have any problems, but it's small. Um, I, it's a little, I know I could save almost an ounce if I went back to, got rid of the knife and the, these clippers. However, this just is a better setup for me. I also have a, some duct tape and then this is some uh, emergency water purification tablets in case, just in case we need to double filter something or if I lose or break my filter and need water, um, it's just a, I don't like to do many redundancies with backpacking, but with water, I do. That's the same bottle that I carried on the AT. Uh, I have to look at it again, but I think they stay good for several, a few years, as long as you don't open the bottle, and the bottle's never been opened. Okay, I think the only thing left that I have not talked about, well, my food bag. I have uh, a Z-Pax bear bag kit. This is the exact same one I carried on the AT. Getting a little rough, but you know, no, no need to replace it yet. I have a the typical Tokes titanium spoon, not spork, with the polished bowl, and then I have a Tokes. I think it's a 650, and this is the same pot I've always used. I have a mini bic lighter. I have some hot lips that go on the edge of the cup because I do drink coffee out of this cup. I do not eat out of my cup at all. I, other Hot water and coffee are the only things I put in here. And I use the freezer bag method for cooking. This is my stove. I do keep it in the, the little bag. It's negligible for weight. And you can see how tiny this, this stove is and it folds out. Folds out like this, screws on the top of my fuel can and I do have a fuel can in here it just screws on the top of there um, I do have a small ultralight cloth and this mostly just protects I use it to wipe things off but it mostly is in here to protect the um, my cup from the fuel can shaking around in there and it keeps it quieter Okay, so that is all from the cook kit. I think the last thing is my electronics bag. And I carry an Anchor uh, 10,000 milliamp hour extra battery. And it's all I carried the entire AT and I never ran out of power. Um, my partner Roadrunner is intending to start with 30 milliamp hours, which is three times what I'm going to start with. Um, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to stick with my 10 and I think I'll probably need more for the stretch around in the Sierra. So I do have a box I'm starting to, I'll have to get at Kennedy Meadows South with like my snow gear. We may have to have our um, micro spikes for San Jacinto earlier on. I have to wait and watch the weather as it gets closer. Um, I, I'm not going to cover my snow gear because I don't have it with me right now. I can tell you quickly, I do have um, Ketula micro spikes. Um, I have a Camp Corso ice axe and I do have a bear canister. However, there is a trail angel that has been in communication with Roadrunner who is going to allow us to, um, I think they're going to like arrange for us to get the canisters that they have when we need them to, 
uh, before the Sierra and then get them back from us at the end of the Sierra. So that will be great to reduce our dealing with the shipping of that the big bulky bear cans. I also plan to probably use my seal skin socks in the Sierra. So I think that's pretty much all different for the snow gear. And my point was that I have another 10 milliamp hour anchor battery bank that I intend to get in my box for the Sierra. So I will start the Sierra with both, both, a, both 10, so a total of 20. Um, and, you know, I may have to change that up on, on trail, but I know through the desert, at least, we should be in town pretty regularly, at least long enough to do a quick charge. I have a number of cords here. Um, it could probably be pared down a little bit, but these are just the most convenient situation. Um, and I have a fast charge for an iPhone, which also is not the one that works for the iPhone from the battery. So I need two iPhone cables, and then I have a cable to charge my... A battery bank and then I have another cable to charge my um, my inReach mini so I really don't other than going with those little adapters on the end there's really not much else I can pare down from that I did try on the AT going with those really short cables and it's just a pain because when you're trying to charge them you got stuff dangling so I'll just keep this this anchor 10 milliamp I have just a little reflective sticker on there um, so I know it's mine and easy to find it uh, but it's smaller than a deck of cards. It's pretty compact. And then I do have an anchor. This is a fast charger, so, and it has the fast charging thing for the phone. And then I can charge separately a um, my power bank or one of the other devices. Um, and you do kind of have to have the bigger block to get the fast charging capacity. And the one thing I do like, the... the um, plug-in prongs do fold in to make it a little more compact and then I have a pair of I have a spare bi a mini bic I have an extra light load towel and then I keep a pair of earplugs just if I'm around other snorers or in hostels or you know whatever just when I need some quiet that is pretty much everything I am taking on the PCT I don't think I left anything out That's it. That's my gear video. So if you all have any questions, please put them down in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you're following along and you'll see if I make any gear changes along the PCT. One thing I'm really wishing for is that I can have better luck with air pads on the PCT. Um, I, I had a lot of air pad trouble on the, the AT. And repairing air pads and finding holes in bathtubs. I even did it in streams a couple times. I find some uh, slow enough moving water that I can see the bubbles. One thing I am considering, and I did not cover, I just realized, I do have this little um, sit pad. It's just the Thermarest Z-Seat. It weighs, I think, 1.1 ounces. I'm considering getting rid of this and taking a piece of Tyvek because I've never cowboy camped, but cowboy camping is a pretty popular thing on the PCT. So it will also help protect my the bottom of my tent. I could put under the tent. And hopefully that would maybe also help protect any punctures to my air pad. So I've not made a decision on that yet, but I do think I'm going to try to get a, uh, a Tyvek pad. And then if I get the Tyvek pad, I can also take breaks and things on that, which is probably better than sitting in the sand. Um, so I think the Z-Seat's probably going to not make it. Um, other than that, we have covered it all. So thank you all and have a good day. I'm hiking off of Bell Mountain the next morning and I forgot, I omitted probably the most important thing of a gear video. What is my total weight? Um, I don't do lighter pack. I've never done a lighter pack before. I put everything in my pack and weigh everything together. The last time I weighed was the other day. I've made, and it was about 15 and a half. That was with a partial can of fuel and empty water bottles and full, full base weight. Um, that also included some consumables like hand sanitizer, friction defense, and some things like that. I did cut a little bit of clothing out, and I don't know my final weight because I don't have the Senchi um, mid-layer yet. However, I should be, I'm thinking it'll be right at 14 and a quarter pounds. So I'm not an ultra light hiker, but I'm pretty lightweight. So anyway, just wanted to come back and add that in for the gear. 
All right, I think that totally wraps up the gear video.